like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Charleston Shrimp Tank Podcast. I'm Eric Elkins. I'm your host from the Double E Insurance and Financial Solutions Company, and I have my co-host, Kenny Harrell, from the Joey Law Firm. And we just had the opportunity to interview Mr. John Thompson, who is a fellow neighbor of ours, but he is a famous writer that's written just, here's a little snapshot of some of the books that he's written that uh, we highly recommend that you take a look at. This one is a great young adult uh, a book about the girl from Felony Bay and the sequel here, as you can see, is Disappearing at Hangman's Bluff. Both fantastic books. Potentially, you're going to see these in movies one day. And then to the right, I got Armageddon Conspiracy, which if you listen to the show, you'll hear about how Oprah Winfrey got her hands on that book. So that's a very interesting story. But John, we can't thank you enough for being part of the show today. You did a great job. And, and you know, one of the things I thought maybe you could tell the uh, to the to the folks listening or watching this is, you know, you used to be with Solomon Brothers for 25 years in the investment banking on the mortgage side, and you had a very very successful career there, but then all of a sudden, you lose your father and and your grandmother, and it kind of woke you up to say, I need I want to do what I really want to do with my life. So you, could you tell us a little bit how that happened? Well, I'd I'd wanted to be a writer when I got out of college and. Um, in fact, I ran into a friend of mine from high school who told me that at my, my senior year in high school, I had told him that I was going to be a writer. I don't remember that conversation, but he sure did. Um, the uh, Getting out of college, uh, I was from the Midwest. I was from a town where I never knew an artist growing up. I never knew a singer, songwriter, dancer, musician, uh, certainly not a writer. And so the idea of uh, going home and telling my parents who had just invested a lot of money in my education that I was going to be a writer, uh, it seemed so ephemeral and narcissistic that I couldn't bring myself to do it. In addition to which, I couldn't figure out how I was actually going to make a living doing it. So uh, I had a job offer from Wall Street. I figured, what better opportunity than to go and learn about the real world for a couple years and then perhaps figure out how to segue into writing. And I did it for the three years. I thought about going back to business school or getting even a doctorate in English, but I was being very well compensated for being a 25-year-old kid. And I thought, well, it'd be kind of crazy to leave, and I was having fun. So it just years bled into years. I had children. The dream of being a writer became impossible when confronted with college tuition and um, the need to save for it. But then... Um, uh, that one year that you just mentioned, Eric, uh, when my father and mother, and my mother had already died, my father and grandmother both died, uh, I just said, you know, uh, this could happen to me. It's going to happen to me at some point. And I need to be a writer before I can't. And so the, the, it was almost like the handwriting was on the wall, and I just uh, started making <clears throat> uh, plans to bail. And I put my house on the market quietly because if you – told people on Wall Street that you were leaving at the end of the year, you somehow weren't, you were not in the bonus pool. <laughs> so, John, it was great listening to you talk to us about the writing process, and you can tell that it is truly a passion of, of yours now. Can you tell people a little bit, I mean, if they want to get access to these books that you've written, can you tell them a little bit about how to go about doing that? Well, sure. Um, this uh, this book is available on Amazon, and it's available in bookstores in, in Char at Blue Bicycle in Charleston. I know that. But um, it's not probably, it's been out for a couple of years, uh, not as generally available. It was the winner of the IPI, which is the Independent Publishers. It was a national award, best thriller of the year. Um, and there was, for 48 hours, a worldwide rumor that Oprah was going to pick the book. Um, that, just so you know what that means, um, I, I, my agent, I, I changed agents at that point, too. My, my current agent uh, and I met uh, through the process. I got calls from everybody in the publishing world, but um, it's worth a, it was worth a million books, uh, a million hardback books wow. if Oprah picked your book, yeah. wow. which was worth about four million bucks in your pocket on day one. Um, <laughs> And then I have switched in the meantime, in the last few years, I've been writing for younger readers, uh, Disappearance at Hangman's Bluff and The Girl from Felony Bay. I write those under the name J.E. Thompson as opposed to John Thompson, just to make sure that no one gets confused and, and, um, <laughs> and buys the wrong book for the wrong age child. Um, 
But uh, the, the Girl from Felony Bay was a book that I, that my daughter actually prodded me to write, and I found that. Uh, in the, in the process of writing it, I was able to tap into a lot of themes that matter a lot to me, racial reconciliation, um, environmentalism, <clears throat> but also to pack it into a really thrilling mystery. Uh, it, was, uh, it won the Southern Independent Booksellers Best Children's Book Award. Uh, it's a junior library guild selection, as is Disappearance at Hangman's Bluff. And the Girl from Felony Bay was uh, that there, every state has a best children's book award uh, in which they choose like the finalists or three books. It was a finalist for best book in seven states. So it's a, it's a great book for kids. It's been run in a lot of schools and it's fun. Well, we're so lucky that you came on the show today. These books, he's, he's a fantastic writer. He's a great person. He's done a lot of great things, not only in New York, but now in Charleston. We can't thank you enough for being here. If Again, if you want to go out and get some of these books, either for yourself or for your kids, obviously you can go to Amazon. Is there a website, John, or a, a, an email, a certain way you want people to try to contact you in case there's some aspiring writers out there who want to ask you for advice? If anybody would like to contact me, the best way is my email address address, which is jet, J-E-T, one, two, two, nine, four, nine. That's my birthday. One, two, two, nine, four, nine at Mac, M-A-C dot com. Jet, twelve, twenty, nine, forty, nine at Mac dot com. Well, that's great. The show, The Shrimp Tank, is about entrepreneurs, and the fact that you transition from the business community straight into writing shows you you are a true entrepreneur. Thank you again for being on the show, and, and please uh, tune into the audio at www.shrimptankpodcast.com slash Charleston. Thank you again. I've been feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank.